Hello, everyone. Benjamin Lindsay here, Managing Editor at Backstage. We are very lucky today to be joined by Travis Fimmel, who's, of course, out and about promoting Raised by Wolves on HBO Max. Um, Travis, thanks so much for joining us. This is great to, uh, to be chatting with you for a little bit. Uh, thanks. Thanks for uh, giving me your time. Yeah, of course, of course. As, as I was saying, I've uh, been a fan of yours since Vikings, and um, this show just feels like a great next step on your acting journey. So it's always great to see you on the small screen and uh, packing some punches for sure. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. Um, now, just for starters here, it looks like the waiting room is still streaming and we'll give it a couple seconds, but um, backstage, our, our audience today is very much the working actors and creators of the world. Um, what do you feel like this role of Marcus has added to your acting skills? Um, I think every job helps, no matter how big or small. I think it um, it helps um, just, you know, practice. You know, same as going to class all the time. It's just all more practice and practice. And, and the difference with this job, it just, it was amazing to be a part of something with, that involves such an icon of the industry and yeah. um, really just such a, such a talent and such a um, vibrant guy and, and, and visual and, and I've never met somebody so creative, to be honest. I imagine that you've been a fan of his for some time, just considering his yeah. resume. Yeah, no, he's got a ridiculous resume. And yeah. and um, it's funny, sometimes he gets, oh, you just think of the sci-fi stuff, and then you go back and look at what films he's done, from Thelma and Louise to, you know, Gladiator and all that stuff. It just He's done every genre, and he's, he's um, you know, he's brilliant in them all. Now, what about this role in this project, aside from Ridley's involvement, um, first attracted you to signing on in the first place? What was that kind of casting? Well, to be honest, I signed on before I read the script because oh, I read yeah. it. And then um, the, script was, the script was terrific too. And, um, and I know I'd, uh, when it comes to the script, I just, uh, character's got so many flaws and that's always my favorite thing in the character. If I'm lucky enough to get the job is, uh, as to um, always, I always want a character that is as flawed as can possibly be, and and has a lot to overcome. And um, and I think his character, growing up as a, a child soldier, he uh, he really he never had any hope. He's just so busy surviving the whole time, and through a bunch of um, incidences on on the show, I become a um, become a father to a child or a father figure, and, and mm -hmm. I think that really really messes with my head and really brings out my insecurities and and um i think the character's got a, a great troubled journey yeah yeah certainly and, and kind of having that child in his life is a turning point i imagine from the path that he was on gives you a lot oh, to play with yeah yeah no, hopefully um you can see the through the the world through eyes of a young innocent boy again and um it might give him hope yeah absolutely well, um, I mean, just speaking of this character and thinking of characters of your past, um, can you speak at all to what kind of things you do to get into character? How, when you're there on the day for the set, or there on set for the day, rather, what, what's your process look like? How do you kind of get into the skin of these various men? Um, well, I do my work well before you get the set, you know. Um, I just, my scripts are just covered in writing um, of thoughts and... and um, stuff that means a lot to me and uh when when you get to set sometimes i uh I'll write a diary about um what i need from that scene or what my character needs and, and, and make it relatable to me and it sort of gets you in the mood because a lot of times things happen quick and um you just sort of through uh processes on on the set where there's a lot of a lot of wheels in motion you just got to be ready all the time and um doing a diary on set is my main thing and it gets yeah. me in the mood of having that past past um life that the audience don't see but right you know gets me in the mood so you're ready for when they say action yeah absolutely and, and especially with television production i feel like a lot of the time you're kind of flying by the seat of your pants it's, it's yeah no fast. for sure you so, gotta come um, ready to do the job Absolutely. Yeah, and I'm, I'm very bad at remembering my words, so I have to try to make it up with um, <laughs> Yeah, write, write it on your palm, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, 
and I've had enough. I've got to ride it around the place. I ride it in the dirt sometimes if I can't remember a line. I'll ride it below <laughs> my feet. Do what you gotta. You do what yeah. you gotta. Um, kind, kind of uh, in tandem with that, part, part of the acting world, of course, is hitting the audition room. It sounds like something like Raised by Wolves. Did you have to audition for it or was it an offer just from the, the breadth of work that you've done before? Um, I am a horrific, I'm a horrific auditioner. I get so nervous and scared and so embarrassed. Uh, I never get a job from an audition. I, all my jobs I got from tapes, mm. putting, or 95% of them. And fortunately enough, I had a, I didn't have to audition for this. I met with Ridley and I already knew my answer. It was I had to convince Ridley that uh, he should uh, hire me, and I must have got him on a good day. Yeah, not bad. Do you, do you have an audition horror story that you could share with us? Sound, oh, they're, all like, horrible. they're all yeah. horrible for me. I get so nervous in front of people. Um, some people are really comfortable in mm -hmm. auditions, and then they get nervous on set. Um, unbelievably uncomfortable in auditions or speaking in front of people. Or class was always so difficult for me getting up in front of um, people and, and trying to perform. I could never do stage, but in front of the camera, it doesn't, it doesn't worry me at all because there's another actor right there and I don't know, I concentrate on him. I can't hear the audience or anything. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I was, all my audition stories, are <laughs> I never get the job. So. No, that, that, that makes sense. You'd be surprised how often I hear that. Every audition is its own horror story. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Well, you, you mentioned that you focus on the actors that you're working across from, and you've had some great scene partners um, just through, through your line of work. Um, what makes a good scene partner, in your opinion? What do you bring to the table? What do you like it when others bring that to the table for you? Um, no, turning into a selfish thing, uh, somebody acting opposite you um, has a big impact on your performance, you know? They can really lift your performance. Um, sometimes you have to drive scenes because the other actor is not feeling it that day or something. I'm not sure, but it's great when you can spar with somebody and go back and forth. And, mm. and um, as long as the people put in the work, I hate, hate working with somebody who's lazy and haven't, hasn't put much effort into it and makes it just about their performance too sometimes. And, you know, your performance off camera has got to be just as good on camera. Yeah, absolutely. Do, do you have a favorite sparring partner in the last few years, maybe from, from Vikings or from this show? Um, well, I, I love work with uh, George Blagden on, on Vikings. Mm. Um, he played the priest and uh, he's a very giving fellow and very intelligent. And um, there's some great written scenes between us. And uh, yeah, he'd probably be one of my favorites, especially from that show. Yeah. I mean, between this and Vikings, I feel like, You've worked with some incredible actors, incredible writers. Um, the scripts kind of speak for themselves, but they are in these elevated worlds that are obviously rather separate from the, the experience that you and I are living today. Yeah. Um, how do you keep a character grounded and real for today's audience, even when you're in the elevated worlds of sci-fi or throwback to Vikings? Well, it's so fun. It's a, it's a, it doesn't matter what world you're, you're in, it's still got the same emotions. Uh, I have relationship problems in this Ridley Scott thing. I, um, uh, I have a child that um, I've got to care for and that who I want to love me. I, and I want my wife to love me. I, I want to um, be a success. I want to be make people that I love proud of me, which is all the same stuff in, in, in life, you know, now. Um, and it's just a different backdrop, you know, everybody, what's a different, like in Vikings, it's like, I had a family that I was trying to take care of. I had a wife and I had children. Mm. And um, everybody relates to that stuff, you know. And yeah. then there, there was an amazing backdrop there of the Viking world and all that stuff. But um, it's still deep down, it's just people trying to be loved and trying to get through life and trying to make the kids proud. And and then there's other, other um, things that go on and it shows a lot of religion then that mm. created a lot of wars back in the in period pieces and all throughout history and now a lot of religious is religious stuff's going on and people not respecting other people's beliefs and um and uh creates a lot of friction in the world and conflict and then sadly it looks like in the future we're not learning from the past at all and right we let 
stupid um, beliefs and, and, and stubbornness not to understand other people uh, get in the way of a good life, you know, and just creates tension and uh, it's very sad. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's why projects like that have found such an audience because they are in these worlds separate from ours, but the themes, the characters, they're all going through things that we can relate to. Exactly. Um, we, we had a lot of audience questions coming in prior to this interview and um, a lot of people asking what you miss about playing Ragnar the most on Vikings. Um, could you share that with us? Uh, yeah, I miss the writing. I had a great relationship with Michael Harris and he's such a fantastic writer, writer and um, it, was just, uh, it was just a unique relationship we had. And I, I miss everybody on set. I miss all the um, Irish people that we got to work with and, and ran the show. They were so talented and such good people and such fun. And, and it was a, I was very fortunate to go through that experience. Mm, absolutely, absolutely. It, what, what have you not tackled as an actor that you're hoping to in the future? Um, uh, um, I don't know, just any dark, flawed character I like. Um, I, I don't like any of the tricks of, um, I don't know. I don't want to play anybody that's all depressive. Mm. I don't like to watch things that just bring you down. And it's, when we're in the entertainment business and um, I don't like people that, that like to be so dramatic and yeah. walk out of a film or mopey and that. It's not entertaining to me. Yeah. So yeah. anything that's not that, I'm happy to do. But you, you do like tackling uh, darkness in your characters, as you say. No, well, for sure, yeah. And I like to try to bring a little bit of a reverence to it and adventure to it, but... Um, has that always been appealing to you as a viewer? What, what actors yeah, did you grow sure. up watching that you really loved? Ah, uh, the Mel Gibsons and Daniel Day-Lewis. Mm. Um, and those guys always had uh, a reverence to their stuff and could put humor in it, even in extraordinary circumstances. And um, yeah, there's not a pity party. You know, so many yeah. people want to do a pity party. I got, just for me personally, that really bores me to death and I don't want to do that. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Um, well, in our final minutes here, we did have a few more audience questions I wanted to get to. Um, a lot of people asking about uh, your farm. Is, it, is my understanding that you, you have a farm in California? Yeah, I've got a little ranch. It's not very okay, big. Ranch. Be okay. home. But um, it's been great. Well, obviously, it's horrible circumstances, but I've had yeah. the opportunity for the last five months to spend a lot more time there and fix it up and um, that's good. I feel, um, I feel bad for people. Unfortunately, they're stuck in apartments during this pandemic and yeah, yeah. You're preaching everybody. to the choir there. Yeah. <laughs> Hope everybody survived. Yeah. Okay. And didn't go too insane. Well, kind of in line with that, we have a question from Amanda Bishop. Um, just asking how you unwind while you're working on a demanding project and, Likewise, how you've been staying active during the pandemic. So it sounds like this ranch has been keeping you busy, but how do you unwind? Hey Amanda, um, how do I unwind? I'm not one of those actors that stay in character the whole time. I mean, it works for them, it's fine, but I, I don't want to go home and I, you know, I want to cut people's head off with a sword or something. <laughs> right. I, um, as soon as I finish the scene, I'm just normal. I just want to socialize with the crew and and have a laugh, you know? We're not curing cancer. We're just playing dress up. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, question from Kate Shirell. Um, and we've kind of touched on this just in terms of the roles that you're drawn to, but what makes you fall in love with the script or film? What are the things that kind of check your boxes? Uh, Kate, um, stuff that makes me fall in love. It always starts with the script normally, unless it's like Ridley Scott, but, um, uh, I love humor and stuff. Not that I get the opportunity to always be in a theme with humor, but um, the depth, uh, something original, um, uh, something that affects you emotionally, you know? I love the read, reading a script is the biggest sign. If you can get affected emotionally by reading a script and then 
once you add actors and, and their emotion and visual stuff, you know, it's really gonna, gonna work, you know? But it's yeah. hard. Scripts are so important, you know, it gives you such a big, a great starting point, you know? Yeah, um, absolutely. We have a question from, as I said, our audience is very much the working actors of the world. We have a question from Clark, Clark Furlong which sounds like he was up for one of the child roles two years ago when it was first casting. Um, uh, so he's just curious what the development and the production journey of the show was like in terms of casting. Um, you came on, Ridley just kind of offered it to you, but how did the other pieces come together? Um, I actually don't really know. They had a casting director in, um, okay, fair enough. Yeah, in uh, England. I think most of the stuff was all cast out of England. I'm pretty, pretty sure by Kate. So I can't really come, but the kids do a, a fantastic job on the show and, and uh, I love working with them. I much rather work with kids than adults. <laughs> well, part of acting is kind of tapping into that inner child anyway, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's such an important, and I've always been taught that as uh, the inner child is the most, well, Jack Nicholson well, and Mel and all that, they just made a career <laughs> out of not growing up in a way, but being so deep and being so manly and it's, uh, it brings out the humor in it. I'm a big believer of the darkest, the, the humor in the darkest stuff is um, the most entertaining for me. Yeah, even in the darkness, there is a playfulness. That's the best kind of performance. Yeah, I um, totally agree. Well, with that in mind, final question for you. What's one piece of advice that you would give your younger self? To me, oh, stay on the farm. <laughs> oh. um, I don't know. The best thing I ever did for my career was study a lot, go to acting class a lot. And I had a wonderful teacher, Ivana Chabot, which I still uh, work with. Um, but yeah, without class, I'd be a, not that I'm not, but I'd be an even more muttering idiot. <laughs> you know, well, you've learned so much. It's a playground to learn. And, um, and a lot of cool actors say that they never went to class and all that. It's like, most of them are lying all the time. Everybody goes to class. It's like, imagine playing NFL and not having a coach. Right, right. No, you, so, do, you, do what, are you just going to be a doctor? <laughs> you do a bit of study if you want to be a good doctor, at least. Exactly, exactly. But I don't know why it's a cool thing for people to say that they didn't didn't study. So many people say it. You know, well, nobody wants to give credit to anybody else. So. Sure, sure. But as you say, like, I mean, practice makes perfect, and part of that is training, in my opinion. So it's nice to hear that that that's what you put yourself through. It makes it easier anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, um, Travis, it's been great having your ear for a moment. Congrats on the new series. We're big fans of yours here at Backstage. And uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. I'm Benjamin Lindsay from Backstage. And Travis, we'll see you next time. Yeah. Best of luck to everybody in your careers. Work hard. Stay out of trouble. Be safe. Stay out of trouble. Exactly. Bye-bye. Uh, thanks, Mike. Appreciate it, Ben. Thank you.